on the vlog again. Just can't wait to do a vlog again. The life I love is making vlogs for my friends. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Doing a vlog again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. Well, hello everybody. How are you guys doing today? Well, we are doing great. We are back for part two here at the Miami County Museum. So, let's not waste time and get going. Well, as we get off of the elevator onto the third floor, we take a look around at all the different things. And, oh my. Well, there it is overalls that were worn by Robert Wadlow. Now of course we know Robert Wadlow because we've seen him outside the museum and uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, on Hollywood Boulevard and you know every time we go by we we speak to to Mr. Wadlow and these would be his his overalls. That is something right there. Now, he was born an average baby. Uh, he weighed eight, eight pounds, five ounces at birth. Oh, it's eight and a half pounds. Eight and a half pounds. Holy shnikes, he was 44 pounds by the time he was a year old. Yeah. By nine, he was six foot two. By 16, he was seven ten. At the time of his death, he was eight feet, 11.1 inches and weighed 439 pounds. One giant man. Wore a size 37 shoe. Fatal infection cost Robert his life. At the young age of 22, his casket weighed 1,000 pounds and required 20 people to carry it to a 12 foot long tomb. There's a beautiful clown painting. A circus performer's outfit. This is the uh, the circus wing of this museum. That'd be your lion tamer's outfit. People to work with the lions. Lion tamer, and then of course the lion. There you have a picture of the lion tamer. Of course, I don't think you, personally, I don't think you can tame a lion. Like, I really don't think you can do that. Like, I don't think you can either, but that's what they are called. That's true. That is what they're called. And here you have various outfits that they would have worn in the circus. Uh, Joseph Patrick Pat Kelly. He is the uh, son of Emma and Eve Kelly. Yeah, this section here is all about the Kelly family. Yep. And they were very big into the clown performing. Uh, if you know anything about clowns, I know a little bit. Um, but if you know anything about clowns, uh, that uh, the Emmett Kelly and uh, Pat Kelly and uh, the, Kelly, the Kelly family in, in itself was a uh, very big, definitely into the clown business. Of course, over here they have all this 
little horses lined up to pull this this big. Those would have probably been used in parades. Parades, yeah. Now that is a very odd hat. Well, yes, a very odd hat, but it is a very beautiful top. That it is. This is the skull of Charlie. Skull, tusk, headgear. Charlie was an elephant. He was a decorated circus elephant who performed in the La Pearl Circus, then later in the Ben Wallace Circus in the early 1900s. The story goes that for a week or so, Charlie's trainer was ill and Charlie was taken care of by other trainers and not taken to play in the Mississippi Reservoir, as was his custom. When his trainer returned and took Charlie to the river, Charlie turned on and drowned him. Turned on his trainer and drowned him. Charlie, in the end, was killed as evidenced by the bullet. You can see the bullet. Looks like they went in here and they came out back here. Because there's more of them back here. And they ricocheted out. You can see the holes. <coughs> this is a circus costume cape. It says it's made of ivory and gold brocade trimmed with silver sequins. White collar of purple satin is V-shaped at back to, and overlaid with arabesques of silver braid trimmed at neckline with gold braid and edged with gold fringe. Yeah, you can see the elephant hook. Wow, look at that one. That one's really cool. I like the one with the elephants, too. That one's pretty neat. Gotta love the ladies with the clown. This is the Tom Nook Stagecoach, which was originally purchased in the early 1870s by the United States government from the Concord Company, a noted wagon manufacturing firm in New Hampshire for Yellowstone National Park. This is a Potter Palmer coach, was purchased by a wealthy Potter Palmer family in Chicago in 1883. At the cost of three thousand five hundred dollars, it was used in eighteen ninety three Columbia Exposition of World's Fair in Chicago as a carriage that carried Infanta Eulalia, the youngest sister of the late King Alfonso the Twelfth of Spain, during her visit to Chicago to attend the fair. That's beautiful. Now Cole Porter. Uh, country singer, musician, composer. Uh, he ordered his Cadillac in January of 1955 uh, for his upcoming European tour and uh, it was also used in 56 and 57 as well. Colvin had the car shipped back to New York in June of 1959 
and was stored in Nice, France. When he bought the car, he paid only $6,836.14 for it. This Cadillac was given to Cole Porter's secretary, Madeline P. Smith, who worked for Porter for over 20 years. And then on June 5th, 1959, Madeline P. Smith's son, Drew Smith, had the car registered in his name. Look at that beautiful interior. That gorgeous wheel. And fire extinguisher underneath the dash on the passenger side. Oh yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can make that out. There's a fire extinguisher there. Now, the Cadillac was eventually sold to Mr. Scott, a New Jersey businessman. Uh, Mr. Scott had the car completely restored to its present condition. He donated Cole Porter's Cadillac to the Miami County Museum in December of 1994. Now, when the Cadillac was under the ownership of Drew Smith, it appeared in the movie The Godfather. Uh, and in the made-for television movie, The Kennedys. In May 1988, the Cadillac had a major facelift. Hibernia Auto Restorations Incorporated in Hibernia, New Jersey restored the car from its frame up. The restoration was completed in December 1989 and cost close to $180,000. Wow! That is a lot of money. For back then, it was a lot of money to restore a car. Well, that's a lot of money now. <laughs> well, it was even more money back then. Right, yeah, absolutely. Here you'll see pictured Caroline Peterball and Hal C. Phelps, which were the founders of the Miami County Historical Society established in April 1916. A U.S. mail carriage. The thing has delivered its letters. So if you see something that interests you here in this museum, and you happen to be able to make your way to the museum, go ahead and stop by their little gift shop. They have things about clowns and the circus and cold border and... You can even purchase your own arrowheads. I'm sorry? You can even purchase your own arrowheads. You can even purchase your own arrowheads. So things about Indians, uh, coloring books, uh, t-shirts, and uh, so much more. So again, as I said, if you're here in the uh, kit shop, go ahead and take a look and uh, grab you some. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week on part two of the Miami County Museum. Uh, I hope you enjoyed part one and part two. Um, this museum is uh, very nice, and I did not even know this museum was here. Uh, my wife uh, told me she says this museum is here, and she told me some of the things that are in it. She said you guys would enjoy it. And I, I did enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Uh, don't forget to join us next week, where we have another great vlog for you as well. Don't forget to join us on all of our social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at the Top Vloggers. Also, if you'd like to help us reach the top, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com backslash the Top Vloggers. Without your help and support, these vlogs would be very impossible to do. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Let's me know that you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I believe that is everything. We'll see you again. Top Vloggers, out.